The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Good afternoon. Before we get started, we'd like to do a sound check just to make sure everyone on the webinar can hear us okay. So if you could please raise your hand using the hand icon, that'll let us know. You can hear my voice. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So welcome and thank you for attending the State Physical Therapy Board's stakeholder meeting via webinar today. Before we get started, we would like to introduce the staff members from the Division of Professions and Occupations that are present. My name is Elena Kemp and I'm a regulatory coordinator with the division. Also attending, we have Yukon Morford. He is the program director and Darcy Magnuson. She's the regulatory analyst. In compliance with the governor's orders regarding COVID-19, the division is transitioned to a platform that is 100% virtual, and we appreciate your flexibility. As many of you have been to DORA stakeholder meetings before, we would like to reiterate the importance of your comments today. DORA makes decisions every day that may affect your life and your business, so your input is vital in the rulemaking process. Throughout this process, our goal is to create regulations that clarify and explain legislation, ensure minimum competency to enter and continue to practice, and provide only what is absolutely necessary for consumer protection without creating unnecessary barriers to the marketplace. Your input will be part of the information that goes to the board as it considers adopting revisions to the rules. More specifically today, we will be discussing the proposed changes to multiple board rules in compliance with section 24.4, 103.3, of the Colorado Revised Statutes. This section mandates a regularly scheduled review of the rules to assess the continuing need, appropriateness, and cost effectiveness of the rules to determine if they should be continued in their current form, modified, or repealed. And as you can see on the screen, we have the statutorily guided principles for review. Um, these principles ensure that the rules are necessary do not overlap or duplicate other rules of the agency, federal, state, or local government rules, are written in plain language and are easy to understand, achieve the desired intent and determine if more or less regulation is necessary, are amended to provide more flexibility, reduce regulatory burdens, and reduce unnecessary paperwork or steps, if at all possible, while maintaining their benefits, are implemented in an efficient and effective manner, including the requirements for the issuance of permits and licenses, have a, a timely cost-benefit analysis produced if requested pursuant to section 244103, um, subsection 2.5, and are adequate for the protection of the safety, health, and welfare of the state or its residents. This meeting is being recorded and will be postponed or will be posted on the board's website um, by the close of business tomorrow. And as the stakeholder meeting is being held solely via webinar, please raise your hand if you, if you would like to speak and we will unmute your line so you'll be heard by everyone. Or you can type your comment in the question section and we will read it aloud. So before we start taking, or before we start taking comments, I do wanna ask that anyone that intends on providing comments Please state your name and who you represent. Feel free to provide either general comments on the rule changes or specific comments on the proposed language. Please try to keep your comments limited to three to five minutes or less. And try not to repeat something that was already said. If you're stating you're in full agreement with someone else, that works just fine and we will note it. Just a couple of housekeeping matters. If you are using audio through your computer, please remember to put any phones on vibrate or turn them off. And whether or not you're using computer or phone audio, please try to keep all background noises to a minimum when speaking. So at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Darcy Magnuson to provide a general overview of, of the rule, proposed rule changes. Thank you, Elena. And so what everyone sees on the screen right now um, is the statute that requires the mandatory rule review uh, by agencies, and the agencies have to create a schedule of that mandatory rule review. So the board is looking at the entirety of the PT board rules right now as part of the mandatory rule review that's set forth in the statute. 
I won't read through all of those because Elena already gave you the factors, but I just wanted to show that so that people are aware um, of why the board is, is going through this process. And then I will walk through the draft rules that were noticed for today's uh, meeting and just give some background information about why the proposed changes were made. Um, and then we'll solicit feedback from folks who are attending via webinar. So to start, um, you can see the red line changes. Rule 1.1 is a proposed new rule. This is to um, make the rules in compliance with the Secretary of State's styling guidelines. So you can see here it just sets the authority um, for the board to promulgate these rules. Scope and purpose, again, part of how the Secretary of State suggests um, that the rules are formatted. So these are just added for that. The same with applicability. Um, general rule provisions, you can see here the, this is definitions under, housed under this rule. Um, and I'll scroll down. We went through and where the rule was uh, duplication, I'm uh, sorry, where the de that definition was duplicated, which I don't believe it was here, we would, we would have removed that. I want to flag um, in the comments, because like I mentioned, the board already did see these rules um, at its last meeting. And so these are questions on the side in the comments that the board wanted to pose specifically to stakeholders to get feedback before the board looks at these again. There'll be another stakeholder meeting and then finally the rulemaking hearing. So I'm not gonna hover here too much since these rules are posted on our website and also were sent out to stakeholders, but I just wanted to note that there. Um, here just changes to make sure that all of the rules within the division are styled the same, the same um, language is used. So it was just a little bit of cleanup as far as this rule is promulgated pursuant to and then the statutory authority under each rule. Same here and here. I'll move more quickly. Um, over some sections where there are not any red line changes and then pause. Um, here was a change to make the boards and programs consistent in the requirement to notify the division of these certain, um, either a felony conviction or discipline imposed by another state, revocation, so on and so forth. Um, the boards and programs range from 30 to 90 days. And so the suggestion is to change to 30 days so that consumers are better protected. Um, changing throughout to make sure the uh, rules are gender neutral. Sorry, trying to get off mute. And um, here is a question from the board. Does this need to be modified? So wanted to make sure stakeholders see that in the context that it's within. Hey Darcy, I'm not sure if you saw that there's a hand raised. Yeah, we'll take stakeholder oh. comments um, after we just go through this to give people an idea of what's with it, within these proposed changes and then we can take comments after that. Got you, thank you. Here is just striking the, the date because the requirement is in place now. So 
for this section, there was some discussion at the last board meeting about whether this should be removed, the part that's highlighted with the comments. So we'll definitely want to hear from stakeholders on that. So you can see here another question that was posed by the board. Um, I'm not going to read it out loud, but I wanted to flag that for stakeholders as well. Again, also wanted to point out this comment or question from the board. So here you can see in these comments, again, um, some changes that were previously suggested by the board and then also removed because of some duplication. This comment here is because the uh, board suggested mimicking the changes above that were in the PT section of the rules to PTA. Again, same comment. And that takes us to the end. So at this point in time, we can, Elena, if you want to take folks that want to testify or not testify, this isn't the hearing, provide feedback, um, we can do that. And if it's a, a specific part of the role, then I'll scroll to that part. Sure, short sure thing. Okay, I have a hand raised by a Miss Eliza Schultz. I'm going to unmute your line. Hello, Hello. everyone. You're staying warm in the snow today. Yes. Um, I am representing the uh, American Physical Therapy Association Colorado chapter. Um, and we just had a couple, well, we have a number of questions. And so I don't know what's the best way to go about doing this, if we want to go section by section or what's the pleasure of staff? It, and that's totally up to you. Um, right now we're showing rule 1.1, but if you want to go down, uh, and kind of provide comments or ask questions uh, in chronological order, that'd probably be easier. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Um, did you hear what I said? Yes. 
So if you would if you would like to just kind of go through your questions or comments in chronological order, it'd be easier for us to scroll down the screen and stop at each section that you are referring to. Okay. Um, uh, section 1.2. So um, one of the things that we were curious about, um, you know, we have a, we are a compact state, and so do we need to include some sort of reference to compacts because our compact doesn't have them licensed here, but they have privileges here. Thanks, Darcy. Um, Thank you. And then, um, let's see, 1.3, the provision of this section shall be applicable to the practice of physical therapists and physical therapists assistants. There's some inconsistencies across just the rules in general where um, I think the board I think the document is interchanging physical therapy and physical therapists. And so we just need to be very clear when we're talking, are we talking about the physical therapist or physical therapy? I capture that correctly and your association is it CPTA is that the acronym it's, it's APTA Colorado APTA Colorado okay thanks Darcy this is helpful um, and so that physical therapy slash physical therapist is is kind of trickled throughout um, the entire document so um we just need to be making sure that we're using the right term in the right place because they're not necessarily interchangeable one is the service one is a person it's it's not too much for you um to point those out where we have it incorrect, that would be helpful so we catch all of them. Um, and even if you don't want to, if you don't have that ready today before the board sees this again, if you wanted to redline it and send it in to us, that would probably be best to make sure we catch it. Yep, I can um, definitely. And we were going to plan, we were planning on sending in all of the comments so you have them all in place, but just wanted to you know, put them on staff's radar now, but we can redline the draft. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so then the next one, um, I, it actually is the board's question around direct supervision under the definition section. Um, and so I believe the question you all have had was, what does what does physically present in the same building mean? Um, and so we have um, we there's a couple of different ways that supervision can can occur. And so I think I think yes, we agree that this should be modified um, to accommodate telehealth, but I don't have specific. Um, recommendations today, we're still kind of vetting this through our organization. Thank you. And I think from what I recall um, from the meeting as well, 
is that direct supervision is defined differently where you're wherever you're looking right so um and having um it was dr Grubman who was talking about it in this in like the educational context having it defined and i could m be misspeaking on where it is but there are three different active definitions and having to teach to all three including the rule and so could that be modified so it's more straightforward for licensees um, to work under. So if you have any suggestions on that as well, mm -hmm. um, I think that would be helpful. Yep, yep. Um, we have sent these drafts uh, out to our um, Government Affairs Committee and we've had a brief conversation about them, but um, we are, we'll, we'll be adding that red line in those recommendations as soon as we have them. We're in process. Great. We have time. That's why we're doing the stakeholder meeting, taking a board stakeholder, board stakeholder rulemaking. So this will go back before the board at the next meeting, but come back to stakeholders and then the hearing. So hopefully we can get all this fleshed out before the hearing, which will be two meetings from now. And what month are you expecting that hearing to be? You can correct me if I'm wrong, but the board will meet again in April and then the hearing will be in June. And we do have a we'll bit. walk through the dates at the end um, of the stakeholder meeting so that you can calendar everything. Wonderful. Um, okay, we have um, a couple more things here. Um, the gender neutral. Um, we had a thought that instead of using pronouns, we could just use like an individual or a licensee um, because we totally agree with the gender neutral, but um, it could be, it might just be easier because it could be a licensee or an individual. That language may not change over time. Um, in terms of the recommendation for supervisory, uh, for how many PTAs a PT can supervise, so this is 1.2.a.2 little a. <laughs> yep, that one. <laughs> um, uh, um, there's, um, we're, we're working on this, but I think it's a really good question. Um, I will just say that there's some folks who think that this is fine and some folks who think it could be uh, increased. So again, we'll come up with a specific recommendation, but appreciate the board's consideration on this one. Okay. Um, and then uh, the tenure non-license period. Um, so it's 1.2 point G point three little b it's the one okay. two or three one two and three question yeah. that the board had to g not this part right uh not that part mm -hmm. it's that one yep okay and so one recommendation might be that they meet the standard for one and either two or three. Okay, hopefully I captured that correctly. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to pull up the rule, so I'm following along with you to make sure. Because I know we have some members on the, the phone that are um, texting me to make sure I don't screw it up. <laughs> is, there a, is there a way that we could just have all stakeholders talk? Because I don't think there's very many of us on the call instead of me. Sure, we can call. When you're done, we can call for other people who want to speak as well. Um, there are only five attendees right now. Okay, cool. Um, and then 
we do like we we feel like the striking of a lot of the other stuff is um uh cleanup and that mirroring the AP or the the PTA section sections with the PT sections are a good idea. Okay. And I think I captured them all, but I think Jill will tell me if I missed something. Okay, that sounds good. If I'm gonna lower your hand and then if you wanna speak again, just raise your hand and that'll let us know so we can take you off of mute. Cool, thanks. Anyone else who is participating um, that would like to speak and provide feedback? All right. Jill Flaherty, I hope I didn't mispronounce your last name. You're self-muted, um, so if you want to unmute on your end, there we go. Uh, yes, you got, you were close with my last name, it's Flaherty. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so I'm an in individual therapist uh, over in Grand Junction, but I'm also, um, upcoming president of the Colorado APTA. So one comment that I have on the idea of having more than um, four people that you can supervise. I was in a hospital setting many years ago and if that rule hadn't been in place, I would have been supervising more than 10 CNAs at a time because they wanted me to supervise the CNAs on the floors that I was working on. So I think you have to be careful about that. I think four is adequate. Four may not be adequate for private practice, but it could be very burdensome in other settings. Um, there was a comment about what does it mean to have direct supervision like in the building? Like what does it mean? in the building. Um, I think that's pretty clear if a person, if a therapist is somewhere in the building, they will be available um, for supervision. Uh, and the direct supervision comment, um, I think there's some concern that like Medicare has different definitions of some of these supervisions. Um, I don't think we should adopt Medicare's definitions of supervisions. Sometimes they can be pretty onerous. And our current um, supervision definitions that we have, I think are adequate and should not be changed. And I think that's all I have to say right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and place you back on mute. And then if anyone, if you want to speak again, just let, raise your hand and we can go through the same routine. Um, anyone else that wants to provide comments on the draft changes? And I should also mention, and we asked the board the same at the February meeting, um, to, this is really an opportunity to look at the rules closely. And if something isn't working or needs revision or is not clear, I mean, that's one of the statutory criteria is whether it's written in plain language and clear for people to understand. Um, this is a good opportunity to raise that. So keep that in mind. Like I said, we're doing a very thorough process to make sure that the rules are in in good form for licensees um, and for others that are impacted by these rules. And so if it wasn't redlined, it doesn't mean it can't be changed. And so I want stakeholders to um, know that. The sooner we hear about it, the better, because like I said, we want it to get back before the board in advance of the hearing, um, because we don't want to be making major substantive changes at the hearing that hasn't been, that the changes haven't been vetted through stakeholders. 
Um, but just keep that in mind as you're looking at these rules. Um, so we'll wait for another minute to see if anyone else wants to chime in. Otherwise, we can move on and let everyone enjoy the rest of a snowy afternoon. And Elena will go through um, the upcoming dates when we close out. This is Elena. It looks like we have a written comment from Ms. Eliza Schultz. Are you able to send out this version soon? And can I redline the new version? Yes, Ms. Schultz. Um, this version should have actually, oh, you mean the after Darcy has implemented the new comments um, from your organization? I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but this version should have been sent to you already um and it would have been attached to the notice so the next time eliza yes we can if you want to uh we can definitely do that if you want to email the rulemaking inbox and then we'll just shoot you a copy of this that's not a problem at all thanks darcy Okay, so the email address um, that you would want to submit any written comments to or the redline version after you draft them is Dora underscore DPO underscore rulemaking at state dot co dot us. And that's also the email address that uh, that was on the notice for today's meeting as well. So I don't see any other hands raised for comments um, or written comments. So we'll go ahead and wrap up the meeting. Thank you for participating in, in today's meeting. As part of this collaborative process, all comments and program recommendations will be provided to the board for review before the next board meeting on April 15th, 2021. Then the additional rule revisions from the board, if they make additional rule revisions, um, will be presented to stakeholders at the next stakeholder meeting, which is scheduled for May 12th, 2021. The board will then deliberate on the final version of the rules at the permanent rulemaking hearing, which is tentatively scheduled for July, or sorry, June 17th, 2021. And let me know if I need to go slower or if I need to repeat any of those dates. I'll just give you a run through again. So the next board meeting is April 15th. The next stakeholder meeting will be May 12th. And then the permanent rulemaking hearing will be June 17th. So that concludes this stakeholder meeting. And thank you again for your participation. We are going to end the webinar now.